they're hoping that it gives them that extra little bit. But that alone, you know, you can't just turn up the spreadsheet and everything else is fine. You know, there's, there's player dynamics so, and everything else. There's so much in there. And for this stats, it often gets abused, used and abused for various reasons, either to try and you know, cajole people, kind of create something. So this this was um, when I looked at my first couple of years ago, so for who scores and Joe Barton played more inaccurate passes than any other outfield Premier League player this season. So you know that's a fact, you know, that's a that's not the stat, that's definitely true. But there's very there's a very obvious inference there that he's then the worst outfield player. Put the most out. You know, it's 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 not said, but certainly inferred that some people will take from that. Mm. And then this was uh, Joey's response. Then you said assessment. He's pretty generous to say that they've mastered it. Probably, you know, um, so you know, it's kind of interesting to see that. You know, obviously, you know, if you could call someone effectively the worst player in the league, they're not going to like that. But it's interesting that, you know, Joey Barton then, the next season, on his own blog, started using off the data to kind of show how well PPR were doing. So it's, it's always the way is that um, if, if you use your stats to say you are doing well, you're above average, you know, everything's right, people will retweet them, use it, you know, they'll absolutely love that kind of stuff. It's when you have to say, well, we've looked at the numbers and actually got below par. People have gone, well, you know, it's just a spreadsheet. And so there's always that balance of kind of saying, well, you know, this is what we think, this is kind of what is depth. We're happy that this is actually what's telling us, and you know, we will stand by the numbers. Well, and I guess Duncan later has been uh, caught in the crossfire himself. Uh, John Cross, with his um, <coughs> enlightened opinion. You know, it's 8% possession, just goes to shoot stats of ease. Now, obviously, you know, that's, that's a crazy thing to say. That's like saying, you know, if, if your nan smoked 40 a day and lived to be 90, well, then smoking doesn't cause cancer. You know, there are exceptions. You know, it's not a you know, really direct link. It's not, you know, you get 8%, suddenly, you know, flags go off and you win the game. It's just, it's just a stat. Like I said, just that they had 8% of the ball. Generally, if you've got more of the ball, you're more likely to win, that's all good. You know, they had more shots. West Brom scored off a reflected free kick. And so, you know, to some extent, we call it lucky. But it's, it's just, again, that inference that, you know, if you've got 80% possession, you must, you must win. Not necessarily. And just because you've got 80% you don't win, it's that's crap. Well, that's not true either. And so within the media, you know, it's very much, you know, I've kind of liked everything I've experienced back to since this episode. Uh, and, you know, the whole kind of way the media works in terms of the articles they produce, it's very much, you know, there's not people love Gokey, it's, it's kind of, isn't this great, you know, people score that say, you know, about how Swans won the coolest teams, and then everyone who Swans fans tweets about it, saying, yeah, we are, we're brilliant, you know, it just gets out. And so there's always that split between what's popular, what works, what gets attention, and actually what's interesting, valuable, and actually adds a level of insight. So within the data, you know, there's always this kind of level of you know, antagonism, the kind of old school kind of thing. You know, my favorite word is the prose malarkey, you know, down to that sort of thing. That doesn't work. So, you know, Forest Green Rovers, first team to take it on, then eight months, nine months later, their manager said, well, you know, what I see, my eyes don't lie. You know, is that, obviously, tell me that happened. Perfect. Camera memory. I was going to say, you know, it's not a bit of paper. It's a cold stat to the scoreline. And yes, it is. Some, especially for a manager. You lose three games, you can't talk about, you know, PDO, TSR, they'll say, well, sorry, I'll get someone else in. But, you know, that's a kind of old school viewpoint that ultimately, you know, it's kind of going out of fashion. So what we've seen over the last two years or so, you know, things have become more and more prevalent. You know, you've had the rise of who scored, Squawker, off the stats getting you more and more. You know, 
kind of seeing patch maps or maps of the day, all those kind of things. So that there's a general growing of the data literacy, the general public, those kind of things. So you know, you've gone from where goals, we score more goals than you, to where better. You know, to, you know play the goals, go from goals for games, goals for 90. You know, someone's going to be coming on for 15 minutes, you know, they'll, they'll have one goal in 10 games, but that's only a, maybe a 90 minute period for them. You know, goals for 90, you take up penalties. You know, some players look good, take penalties out, actually, you know, they're bang average. And then goals and assists for 90, again, so you know, then actual versus expected goals. So every time you're getting a, a greater level of detail, a greater level of understanding, and it's bringing more value to it. And so, you know, whenever you do this kind of analysis, you can't say, well, you know, this is what's happening. You say, France, get rid of the Alas because you know, someone's TSR is better than other last because they got Anders Fan there. You know, that explains 90% of the difference. You know, it's, it's trying to break out those things that might impact on the on that stat. So within data now, it's this, this kind of change going from just recording score, maybe recording shots grown and grown to now where you get into the kind of what is you know big data is kind of a buzz where you know, sometimes some people think well if I can't fit it in Excel it's big data. That's, that's not quite true, you know, some of the Facebooks and Googles, you know, that's monstrous kind of stuff. But you know, twenty five points per second for twenty three items, so twenty two players in the ball, you know, for ninety five minutes, you know, that's millions of data points in a single game. <coughs> got several seasons, different leagues, you know, you start to get the serious volumes of data. You know. And then beyond that, you've got the kind of small data. So you've always got to try and balance the two. And then, you know, you've got like individual games. So it might be that something happens in a particular game that isn't replicable, but has made an actual difference. So it's just trying to tie the two together. Kind of, you know, what you can do on the large scale and also the smaller scale. Sometimes, you know, kind of how much is too much? Um, you know, I'm not trying to be the boost all, you know, a lot of the stuff on there, but I mean, this, this is a heat map of the goalkeepers. So, you know, you know, I think that, that's kind of taken it a bit too far. You know? I mean, to be fair to them, this is probably automatically generated by two players and it pops out. But you kind of think, well, actually, you know, is there value in that? So again, when you're talking about data, you know, this kind of comes back to my day job. You know, you can present the same data in different ways. Some work, some don't. So this is three charts, same, same thing uh, for various regions, looking at blood levels. So the top left is England with their 3D bar chart, which is not great. Yeah, Scotland on the right with their flags of blood, but they don't have the figures, don't really have any scale. It looks the coolest, but tells you to a roll. And then, for to say, whilst we're at the bottom, I think simple and effective. Um, green, okay, yellow, not too good, the red, bad. So, you know, with data, you can present the same thing in various different ways. You know, it doesn't have to be fancy, it can be simple and effective. And I'm sure, you know, to some extent, that's what Brian and John have talked about their response. So again, in terms of the layout, you know, this is something I'm talking about, I don't know if it's here or not, but uh, from stats so that I just kind of make basically the images. So you know, you can go from something that's <coughs> quite disparate, you know, you've got a hunt for a bit here, a hunt for a bit there, put it all together. You know, you can create these kind of dashboards, again, I'm sure Brian will talk about this in a lot more detail, you know, using some stuff like Tableau, where you can kind of put these kind of things together kind of get a bit more value. So you know, instead of having to hunt through, you put the key pertinent points in front of someone, and you've got it all there in one go. So going back to my idea of like, well, does the table ever lie? Right. Alan Shearer says no. Which, you know, even he got Newcastle relegated. Strong statement. And then uh, Baz Davidson, who did some stuff with 21st Club, uh, saying uh, it was hard to see that. Um, you know, they felt that Swansea totally overperformed, and you know, based on their models, 
would have got 44 points instead of 56, finished 16. Now, you know, that feels a bit harsh to me, but you know, they, those guys know what they're doing. But one of the things that Matt talks about is that when he um, presents it back, he talks about A chance, B chance, and C chances. So kind of grouping, grouping shots in various levels of chance quality. So when we look at um, kind of overall shots taken, which is shots conceded, you know, the black line is, is neutral, it's the right hand side, you shoot more, then you can see, it's to the left, you can see more. So generally speaking, good teams shoot more, good teams shoot less. You know, that, that whole kind of area around the PSR, total shots ratio is, is, is fairly well established. If not both by far. A perfect relationship. There are certain things generally, you know, in the top team will have the lion's share of the shots. If you look at it by um, team position, so typically the teams out just kind of decluttering, you know, you've got this kind of elite level there, and then almost a bunch of everyone else to the left. Now, you can either look to try and say, well, there's a straight line, which I don't think there necessarily is. I think there's Two groups. The top teams dominate, everyone else is a bit of a mismatch. You know, there's, there's no clear difference in what they do. So, of course, you know, not all shots are the same. Uh, this is Premier League shots, so excluding penalties uh, for last season, so just under 10,000 in there. Um, you can kind of see where the black the black patches are. <coughs> you know, ultimately, you know, that's the kind of whether it's the danger zone, the key area, whatever you want to call it. You know, that's actually. That's ultimately where the goals come from. You know, that's where the goals come from. That's what we So obviously not, not all shots are the same. So if we start to look at break it down by where the shots come from, you know, ultimately, you know, there's just under 10,000 shots. Um, you, know, the, you can see on the right hand side it's kind of further out beyond beyond 22 yards on the line of the D. There's 3,000 shots with 73 goals. You know, it's, it's kind of hitting both, both the best. You know, they're great for your TSR because you know, they're relatively easy to sort of engineer that. But the actual value of them is, you know, pretty, pretty minimal. So we look at it at actual conversion level. So, way I imagine said you've got three chance levels, I, you know, I've, I've turned it up enough, I've got four. Whether that's better or worse, I'm sure. But, um, you know, basically, you kind of, Close in central, it's kind of converted at just thirty percent. Going out to your kind of small chances at just under three. So you know, it doesn't have to be a really convoluted, really complex kind of model. You can just kind of have great, good, okay, and you know, small. And within this, you know, there's a very much positional. Ideally, if you have the video, you know, kind of in some later, you know, that, that adds an extra level of value where you've got the video as well and the location. One thing, bear in mind, you know, no matter who you are, don't fall in love with your model. If you build something, you know, you kind of hold it dear, you think it's right, you don't want to kind of take any criticism of it. But, you know, anything you should do should kind of pass the smell test. So this was Goldman Sachs in model. I mean, you know, given how they kind of uh, quite a key part of the global meltdown, you know, shouldn't necessarily trust them on who's going to win the World Cup. But um, you know, one of the things they had was that if Brazil got to the quarters, they were 91% likely to get to the semi. Now, it doesn't matter who they're up against. You know, in a one-off knockout match, I don't think any men's team, you know, men's national team, would be like 91% likely to progress you know, against someone else who, however, has got to the quarterfinals. You know, you kind of think, well, that's ridiculous. You have to go. You know, what you should do. You know, there are. They did this massive piece, and at the end, they kind of basically said, well, it's just a bit of fun. Yeah, I hope they don't say that to their clients. But, so, but, you know, you should always kind of sense check. You know, if your mom says something fantastic or something that no one's ever seen before, chances are it's wrong. You know, very rarely will you find something completely groundbreaking. More often than not, you put some numbers in the wrong place, you made some dumb assumptions. Kind of looking at um, 
kind of things. So this is a, where we did that segmentation. So basically, beyond 22 yards or wider than 6 yard box, I kind of call them small chaps. So less than that, but six of their small chaps. Now obviously, you know, we've got this kind of, you're small, you're okay, it's a very kind of cut and dry line, whereas in reality it's kind of straight and gray. But you know, they, they got six of theirs, and Hulse got three. And you know, they're more shots, only 1.9%. So you know, that's, that's kind of three goal differential, but it's, it's even more pronounced when you look at what they conceded. So Leicester's was only 200, which is near absolute superb. I wouldn't, you see, I wouldn't say lucky, that's the plan, you know. But uh, you know, how much of that is defensive pressure, good goalkeeping, everything else, you know. The big question always in any kind of analytics is, is this repeatable? You know, if exactly the same thing happened next year, would they end up like these six? Would those four goals make a difference as to how they seem to pan out? You never know. Whereas Hull ended up conceding nine from this area. So, you know, if you add up the difference on these small chances, it, it comes to the like, 10 goals, which, which is the difference in the goal difference between Hull who goes out and less than stay up. You know, so, you know, this is just picking one thing. There's always a danger when you're kind of cherry picking and fishing that you find something that actually really isn't there. It's just in this data set, but it's prevalent. But you know, it could be just as simple as pull that in too many shots from distance, that's why they went down. You know, you, you could do some passive analysis, loads of detail, but it could be as simple as that. They got caught from distance. This is the kind of looking at the other end shots taken, you can kind of see Chelsea's there, it's brutal. There's so much, in terms of say, in and around the six yard box. Um, you know, the conversion rate is absolutely huge as well. So again, is that that they're just creating superb chances and Costa is perfect for finishing them off? Is that repeatable? Maybe, maybe not. Whereas Southampton didn't have as many in that kind of area, but they were actually best team in the league at preventing these kind of shots in and around the edge of the six yard box with those kind of great chances. And so you know, that was part of that reason why they did so well, is that they kept those kind of things in the middle. So there's a couple of other ones, the big differences again, you know, it's a bit unfair comparing Arsenal and Burnley to their relative positions. But you know Burnley got absolutely hammered to the six yard box, especially on headers. So again, you know, this, you know, this doesn't say, well, you know, your keepers wrong, your defenders wrong, your fullbacks are wrong. You know, that's where the video comes in. You know, this is a kind of starting point. You say, well, Burnley got what, you know, 50 or so more chances conceded in this area than any other team. You know, is that just bad luck? Is that systemic? What is it about them? You know, keeper never comes off his line. Is it like kind of, kind of crosses? You know, you, you kind of start start with this, build the hypothesis, look at the data, look at the video, and try and build off that. So uh, when I look at the back, um, 21st of that thing, say, this one's just trying to get 44 points, I'm kind of outraged. There's always this difficulty, you know, when someone says that, you know, if they said, this one's just finish six, I'd be like, fantastic, you know, I'd tweet the hell out of it. You know, I'd say, yeah, they're spot on, you know, those guys have their stuff. You know, if they say 16, they're like, but in reality, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a reasonable kind of thing. But the only kind of real thing I could see in particularly was that they were very good at not conceding headers within that key area. Now again, you know, whether that's kind of crosses, whether that's different Fabianski made this season, you know, it's, it's something that the video would show. So ultimately, you know, I tried and tried, kind of ran out of time to kind of prove 21st level problem on and say, well, no, 16 is far too, far too hard, it should be kind of better. Ultimately, I couldn't quite find it. So, ultimately, I think it's a kind of magic that I wanted to kind of mix my Harry Potter and uh, Highlander little messages. So this was in the front of the Z Fellows Hall, a new breed of young manager. So, there, there's something there. You know, whether it's kind of looking at the data, whether Swansea are kind of a mid tier of Chelsea, in that, you know, stats don't look that great, but they kind of get the job done, but at a lower level. Um, thanks very much.